I just can't do it anymore. I have nothing left. Between the divorce, the cancer, your mom dying and being laid off, I know it feels like you're going through a lot. <laughs> Believe me, I have been there. Just remember, when God closes a door, he opens a window. And never forget, God never gives you more than you can handle. Uh, uh, uh. God never said that. the Lord. Excited to see each and every one of you at church today. Uh, again, we are in the middle of a four-part series called God Never Said That. Last week we talked about God wants you happy and the belief that, that His highest priority is your happiness. Uh, today we will talk, uh, talk about something else. We'll get to it. Uh, next week uh, will be the subject, it doesn't matter what you do as long as you don't hurt anyone. It doesn't matter what you do as long as you don't hurt anyone. So we will definitely talk about that. And then uh, the last week, uh, probably the most important week, is it doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're sincere. It doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're sincere. We will talk about that. But today we're going to talk about something that I have heard my entire life. I've heard my entire life, it's something that a lot of people believe in the Bible, that is actually in the Bible. They will actually come up to you and, and say that. Before we go into that, how many times in your life have you just been stressed and, and just overwhelmed and busy beyond busy? Has anyone ever been there just busy beyond busy, stressed, overwhelmed, just could not take another thing. Someone once said that in your life, you're either going through a difficult time, either about to go through a difficult time, or you're coming out of a difficult time. Now, that is pretty depressing, actually. I mean, it's just pretty depressing. But honestly, could you look back in your life and see that you're either about to go through a difficult time, or you're in a difficult time, or you just came out of a difficult time. Can you see that in your life, that that pattern usually, usually happens? Stuff just always happens. I mean, it's, it, it's just, it, it's inevitable in this life that something always happens. You, you have your aging parents, and maybe medical concerns, and, and loss of a family member, and marital issues and work stress and depression and on and on and on. And when you're about to pull out your hair because you cannot take one more thing, some annoying Christian comes up to you with annoying Christian advice and you're sitting there going Rah! like that and they're saying, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. God never closes a door without opening a window. What does that even mean? I don't understand it. God never closes a door without opening a window. Well, if you're on the 12th floor, what does he want you to do? Jump off? I don't understand it. What, what, what is this? And then, don't worry. Don't worry. God helps those ha, who help themselves. Bless God. God never said that either, but we'll, we'll get into that later. But the one that we're tackling today is, is some Christian will come up to you and say, God, let me tell you, God won't give you more than you can handle. Praise God. Someone will come up to you and go, don't you worry. I'm not quite sure why we get into this voice when we talk to someone that's going through something. I don't even know where they teach it. But I just want to let you know that God... I Some people become goats or... or or something when they talk about God. I don't understand. But God won't give you more than you can handle, little Betty. Don't you worry about it. Well, God never said it. 
God never said that. But people, uh, people will say this, and I've heard it my entire life. I've even said this to people in my life. I have counseled people before and said, don't worry, don't worry, God. I've never done the God thing, but it's just fun to do. Anyway, I've never done that, but I tell you, don't worry, don't worry. God will not give you more than you can handle. And it's awful advice because that person usually will look at me with streaming tears going down their, their eyes and go, then God don't need to trust me as much. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, what do, what do I say to that? I don't understand. I don't, like, at that point, invisibility. I don't, I don't know what to do. But people will tell you that this is in the Bible. I really believe that it comes from a good place. It comes from a good place that people tell you this. And it comes from a misquote of one scripture uh, that we'll look at, but it comes from a misquote of scripture from a good place, but detrimental, it can be detrimental to your relationship with Christ. It's good, it, it's, it comes from a great place, but it comes from a misquote of this scripture. It comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. It says, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Paul is talking to the Corinthians here about being tempted, about things that would lure them away from Christ. He's talking about temptation here. He is not talking about cares and struggles and worries. He's talking about temptation here. He's not talking about that, that stuff. He's talking about tempting. God will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. In fact, if you look through the Bible you will see tons of examples of people that just had too much. That just had too much. Number one, Gideon. He, he, he was the least of his clan. He's hiding in a wine cellar. He's small. He's weak. And the angel comes up to him and says, mighty man of valor. And he's hiding. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I can't lead an army. This is ridiculous. He he has to put out fleeces before God to make sure that this is really what God wants him to do. Moses, he says, I can't speak. I stutter. I'm, I'm awful. Can you send someone to speak? These people are wearing me out. I can't do this. You know, the Israelites will go to him and, and constantly just ask him stuff and, and, and complain to him. Well, why did you bring me out here to die? Were there not enough graves in, in Egypt? This is ridiculous. We want to go home. <laughs> they, were, they were like... Isaiah, if he could talk. Are we there yet? I want to go home. Give me food, right? It's just, they were constantly on him. And he's like, Lord, I can't do this. These people are wearing me out. Elijah, right after a victory, right after he, he uh, slew the prophets of Baal, he went and sat under a tree and hoped for death. David, in, in, uh, in Psalm 38, 4 and 8, it says, For my iniquities have gone over my head like a heavy burden that are too heavy for me. I am feeble and severely broken. I groan because of the turmoil of my heart. That sounds like a broken man to me. He says, I just can't do it. I can't do it, y'all. Esther, she was very afraid. Even Paul in 2 Corinthians 1 and 8, it, it says that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, and so that we despaired even of life. We were put, put too much on us. There was too much put on us. We couldn't do it. Listen, even Jesus was there in Mark 14. 
He, and he began to be troubled. Uh, this is Mark 14, 33 and 34. And he began to be troubled and deeply distressed. And then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. There's too much on me. There's too much on me. And at that point, he started sweating drops of blood. God never said that he would not give you more than you can handle. God never said that, that he would not uh, give you more than you can handle or allow things to, to be on you more than you can handle. But you're sitting there going, why? Why would he do that? Well, today I want to give you two reasons why he would allow you to endure something more than you can handle. Number one, to depend on his presence to depend on His presence. When things are good, we tend to forget God. I will admit that my prayer life is not as strong when things are good in my life. But I tell you what, something happens and we start calling on God. I tell you what, when something, when something is going well in my life, the, the prayer life really does suffer. It really does. And then sometimes we, we get into something rocky, something bad happens on, uh, in our life or whatever, and all of a sudden we're, God, I pray, I rebuke that, you know, and we start just rebuking stuff and we start talking to God. I mean, like he's the bestest friend you've ever had. And he is, but we don't always talk to him like that. People on Facebook, have you ever seen this? Have you ever seen people on Facebook? They'll usually post things. They'll post like funny things and po fo post funny memes and, and things like that. You know, usually, and, and sometimes they'll even be cussing. You know, they'll be like, well, my boss needs to blah, 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 beep, 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 you know, and, you'll, and, and they're, they're, they're that, right? And, and everything's right there. But then when something bad happens, like their mama is sick or, or you know, they, I don't know, their dog has the gout. I don't know what happens. But anyway, something is wrong in their life. All of a sudden, they're asking for prayer. All of a sudden, they want prayer. You may have posted something about Jesus and they'll argue till the death that they don't need God. But when something happens in their life, like a parent has cancer or when they have cancer or something like that happens, when they don't think that they're going to make it, all of a sudden they need God. And they need you to reach out to God for them. So why would God allow us to be in over our heads? So we can call on Him to teach us to depend on His presence. You know, Jonah did the same thing. God told him, listen, dude, I don't know if he said dude. It's not in the King James. He could. I mean, I think this is the new revised Anthony of it, edition of the Bible. I'm not sure. But anyway, he said, dude, I need you to go to Nineveh. Nineveh. It's just fun to say. What if you did it with God? Nineveh. Anyway, so, all right, so... He said, I want you to go to Nineveh, a wicked, perverse nation. And I want you to go there and I want you to tell them about me. And Jonah said, heck no, I won't go. I'm not doing it. I don't like them and I'm not doing it. So what did he do? He hopped on a ship and went the other way. Well, you know, things happen and all of a sudden he finds himself in the belly of a big fish. You know the story. And Jonah 2.2, 2, it says, And he said, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice. In the new revised Anthony edition of the Bible, basically this reads like this. And he said, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction, and he answered me. Out of the belly of hell, I cried. I was in hell. And you still heard my voice. Have any of you gone through something like that? Gone through where you believe that you are just lowest to the low. You cannot believe how low you are. You're like, if, if I get one more little thing on me, 
I am going to lose it. I'm going to lose it. God, I can't stand where you have me right now. I can't stand where I am right now. And Lord, if you trust me this much, because I believe you won't give me more than I can handle, if you trust me this much, I need you to stop it. Jonah was there. Jonah 2, 7, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord and my prayer went up to you into your holy temple. A lot of people do this. When life gets hard, they start questioning, why is this happening? I don't understand. If God were with me, I wouldn't be going through this. I prayed for one thing and I'm getting another. If God was so great, if God was so powerful, if God was actually good, I wouldn't be going through this. Let me tell you today, do not doubt that God is with you. Never let the presence of a storm make you doubt the presence of God. Never let the presence of a storm cause you to doubt the presence of God. Why? Why would God allow this to happen so you can call on Him? And then it's a promise. It's already a promise that He will never leave you nor forsake you, but it's a promise. Psalm 145, 18, The Lord is near to all who call upon Him. To all who call upon Him in truth. Some of you may be in a storm today. Some of you may be in the hardest time in your life. You don't know how to get past it. You've been in it for a while. You don't know how to, how to see your way through it. You've asked God to take it away. You've asked God to help you through it. You've asked God to take it uh, away. And you've, you've asked God to give you strength through it. You've asked God to give you peace through it and he still hasn't done it and you're questioning, why God? Why am I still in the storm? Why am I still in this mess? Why am I still going through this? If you're good, if you're great, if you love me like you say you are, you would take me out of this. You would take me out of this. But I'm convinced that God sometimes will take us to the valley to show us his goodness. I'm convinced that God has taken me to the valley many times to get my attention. To get my attention. He says, Anthony, you didn't call on me like you were in the mountain. And I've got new things for you. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to take you to the valley. I'm going to teach you to call on me. I'm going to teach you to depend on me more than ever because in the new season that I have for your life, in the new level that I have for your life, in the new things in ministry that I have for your life, you are going to have to have a more intimate relationship with me. So I'm going to take you in the valley. But let me tell you, folks, I would rather be in the valley. I would rather be in the valley with him than be on the mountaintop without him. I would rather be hurting in His presence. I would rather be down and distraught knowing that God is with me than to be on the mountaintop wondering why I'm missing something. So why would God allow you to have, to, to have more on you than you can handle to depend on His presence? To depend on His presence. But also to experience His power to experience His power. Too many of us try to do life on our own when you were not created to do it on your own. Karen, can I borrow you for a second? Let's see here. Who believes they're stronger than Karen? Really? Nobody? Nobody? She's pretty short. All right. Who believes, who believes they're weaker than Karen? Who believes they're weaker than Karen? No one for the love. Jackie, come here. Come right here. 
Karen, you sit right there. Well, you don't sit, you stand. Okay. Looks like you're sitting, but you're standing. Come here. Uh, Y'all face this way. Okay, great. So, this is your bucket in life. Who's stronger? Who do you, who, who do you think is stronger? You think, okay, you think you're stronger. No, she thinks I'm stronger. Okay, you think you're stronger. Okay. All right, here we go. There's your bucket in life. Congratulations. You've got a bucket in life. Now, life comes along, and they just start adding stuff to your life. Hold it out. Hold it out. Come on now. You can do this. There you go. Good job. Life just comes along and starts adding, stu adding stuff to you. My mom is sick. I don't know how to handle this. Oh, well, I got a bad report from the doctor. Got a bad report from the doctor. How am I going to handle this? The doctor said that Looks like you're dropping it a little bit. The doctor said that it could be cancer. I don't know. They... Well, my marriage is falling apart. Just don't know how I'm going to do it. Don't know how I'm going to do it. Well, you know what? This ain't that much, right? Not compared to what I've been putting in there, right? But still wait. So she believes she has this life. Karen, how you doing over there? It's a little heavy. It's a little heavy, right. I want you to notice something, though. She believed that Jackie was stronger than her yet she is still holding the bucket. She believes that Jackie is stronger than her, but she's still holding the bucket. She said, it's a little heavy. I'm trying to carry it. But yet she believes that Jackie is stronger than her. Now what would happen if you gave that to Jackie? Try it. It's okay. She can handle it. Now, how does your arm feel? Lighter. Amen. <laughs> That's good. Amen. You, you feel lighter. You gave, it, you gave it to someone that you thought is stronger than you. So someone, I want you to notice that life kept pulling her down and pulling her down and pulling her down. And if Jackie was representing God, that is what we do. We sit there and we sit there with our life and we start, it starts weighing down and weighing down and weighing down and weighing down. And God is sitting there saying, give it to me. Give it to me. This is too heavy for you. You can't handle it. You weren't created to carry it. You weren't created to stress about it. Your blood pressure was not created to worry about it. You were not created to lose sleep over it. You were not created to bear it. You were not created to stress about it. You were not created to anguish about it. You were created to release it to me because I can handle it. You were created to need God. But so many of us sit here with our life and we say, we got it, we got it. And our hands are shaking and we can't even bear the weight. And we're like, oh, we got it. We got it, Lord. We know that you won't give us more than we can handle. So we sit here and we keep having the weight on us because we believe the faulty belief that you won't give us more than, you can ha than we can handle. And God says, I never said that. What I did say was, come unto me, all your labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light, and what you have been carrying for your entire life is anything but light. Because you weren't created 
to handle it. You were created for me. You were created to give it to me. When you finally decide, I've had enough, I'm giving it to God, I am no longer going to carry this, that's when you experience the full power of God. In 2 Corinthians, Paul talks about a thorn in his flesh. What was it? We have no idea. Some people think it's, it's his eyesight, his speech, all kinds of stuff. But he pleaded with the Lord three times to take it away. And, and, and you may think he prayed and maybe fasted like three days to take this away, but I believe that it was a lot more when he pleaded with the Lord. He probably fasted for months. He probably had, had churches that he had started praying for him and fasting for him and, and trying to get things done. And in my mind, if someone was praying to God for a healing, I think Paul would be a pretty good candidate for it. If someone was praying to God for something to be taken away from him, I'm pretty sure that Paul would be a pretty good candidate for it. He wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. He is pretty close with God. Him and God were kind of tight. Okay, But yet, he pleaded three times. And maybe you have your own thorn in your flesh that just hasn't gone away. And you're asking God, why? God, why can't you just answer my prayer? Why can't you just heal me? Why can't you just make the depression go away? Can you, can you just fix the chronic headaches? Can you fix the marriage? Can you fix the child with cancer? Can you tell my kids to talk to me? Lord, one month, just one month, can you let us get uh, ahead financially? Lord, I know you can do it. You can snap your fingers. You can say the word. If you can speak out a universe, then you can help my situation. But Lord, it seems like you're just not doing it. And that's exactly where Paul was. But God said this in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, 9 and, 9 and 10. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast of my infirmity. So, so when God said this to Paul, he switched. Uh, it, it's a, a light switch just went off in his mind. He said, fine. If you're not going to take it away, I will boast in my infirmities. I will boast in, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities. I take pleasure in my reproaches. The people that come against me because I'm for Jesus, the people that say I'm a Jesus freak, the people that throw me in jail because I still know Jesus, the people that come against me and say, why don't you do this or why don't you do that? I will gladly take it because I know Christ. I will take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and needs and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Rima, say it with me. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Say it again like you mean it. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You can tap into a power that goes beyond your human ability. You can tap into a power that will go beyond where you think your ability stops. You have the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead living in you. What do you think is not possible? What do you think is not possible? Now I'm just going to be real here. I believe that we can be real with each other. Pastoring is hard. It just is. Sometimes I just don't have the energy to come up here and preach. Sometimes I just don't have the energy and I'm just weak. Sometimes I don't feel well. Sometimes 
I look out and I'm like, I am responsible for what? Every week, I spend time in my office back there and some may wonder, where's the pastor? Why, why is he not around? But what I'm doing back there, I'm not watching Netflix. I'm not posting on Facebook. I'm, actually, all that stuff is off. I'm praying. I'm praying for you. I'm praying that God does an amazing thing in this service. The service that we're about to come into, I pray about it. And I pray this every time I preach. These are your people. This is your church. I thank you for the opportunity. But Lord, ultimately, have your way. Because what Anthony wants here won't fly. What Anthony wants in the house of God doesn't matter. It's what God wants here. I have chosen... Let me back up. When they asked me, did I want to take the church, I said, no. I was kind of like Jonah. Heck no. I don't want to do it. Um, but it was off the assumption that I would have to be rowing. It, would all, it was off the assumption that I would have to be rowing. But in the change, in when God got a hold of me, He showed me that it's not about rowing a boat. It's about sailing. Here's what I mean by that. When I said no, it was off the assumption that I would be rowing a boat and trying my hardest to get it ahead and trying and trying and trying and trying. When God showed me it's not about rowing, it's about sailing. Put the oars up. Put up the sail and let the Spirit blow through it. Amen. I have chosen to sail and not row. Many of you, and here's why I say this, many, are, many of you in your situation right now are rowing. Many of you have gotten in a boat You've started to row, and you said, well, I can take care of this because God won't give me more than I can handle. God, if it's on me, I must be able to handle it. My parents have cancer. My kids won't talk to me. My health is declining. My back hurts every single day, and my marriage is falling apart. But Lord, I know but you won't give me more than I can handle. So I'm just going to keep rowing. And all of a sudden, when you stop rowing because you just can't do it anymore, the boat is too heavy, the boat is too big, the, you just can't row anymore, God is finally saying, okay, now can you put up the sail and let me do my job? Now can you, can you stop trying to get somewhere on your own and let me do my job? You're saying, I can get there, I can get there. And it works for a while until you just absolutely give out. But I'm learning to put the sail up and let the Holy Spirit bring movement. I serve a God that when I can't get it done, He will get it done. When I am weak, He is strong. God won't give you more than you can handle. Is so toxic and that's why you're struggling. You think it's about you, but it's about Him. He didn't create you to hold it. He will give you more than you can handle when He calls you to do something for Him. When He called me to pastor, 
He gave me more than I can handle. When He called me to minister, He gave me more than I can handle. When He called you to tell people about Him, He probably gave you more than you can handle. In this life, there will be things that God will allow to put, be put on you that will be more than you can handle. If you're doing ministry, there will be more than you can handle. If you're raising kids, there will be more than you can handle. If you interact with other humans at any point in your life, Life, there will be more than you can handle. If you are a man married to a woman, there will be more than you can handle. If you're a woman married to a man, there will be more than you can handle. If you live with another human being that is the opposite sex than you, there will be more than you can handle. Praise the Lord. But you were not created to do life on your own. You were not created to struggle through this life. You were created to be dependent on Christ. Instead of saying, I have to be strong because God is counting on me and He won't give me more than I can handle. Instead of saying, I'm strong. Why don't you say, you know what, God, I'm weak. I'm broken. I can't do it. I was not created to do it by myself. I was not created to struggle through this life. I was created to depend on you and give you everything. Everything that I am and everything that I hope to be is in you. Because folks, until God is all you have, you'll never realize that He's all you need. So why would God give you more than you can handle to draw you into His presence and show you His almighty power? Stand with me all over the house. Father God, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord, for trying to do it all on our own. Knowing that you are there, knowing that you will never leave us nor forsake us, you'll always, always be with us till the end. Lord, forgive us for trying to bear it all alone. Lord, now we realize that sometimes you'll take us through some things to show us your presence and to show us your power. So Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will show us how to release it to you. We will give it all to you in the name of Jesus.